fast as we can. Guys, welcome to review session. Test tomorrow. Ready? Question number one. Question numero uno. What, what angle is coterminal with negative 820? Swings around and around. Negative 820. Hold on one second, Matt. Negative 820 swings. Look, check it out. If you're going negative, start down. So that's 360. That's 720. And 720 to 820 is another 100 more. And each quadrant's worth 90. So 820 stops right there. Matt, buddy, what was the answer that you got? You got C. Did everybody else get C? Good. Do we need to go over Y or you're good? Good. Next. Well, what is 600 converted to radians in terms of pi? So, so how do you convert from degrees to radians? What do you multiply by? You multiply by pi over 180 because radians typically have a pi in them. That's how you, that's how you remember that. And it's always typically on top. So that's going to be 600 pi over 180. And then we need to reduce that 600 over 180, and we're going to obviously use our calculator because why not? 600 divided by 180. Whoops. 600 divided by 180. Math, convert to a fraction, and it's going to be 10 pi over 3. That's it. 10 pi over 3. What's up, buddy? Absolutely. An alternative method that you could take is, how much is pi worth in degrees? Pi is 180. So you could literally have subbed in 180 for pi for each of those multiple choice answers, and only one of them would have given you 600. What's up, buddy? Now let's do this. Let's do this. So this question is directly from your review sheet, your reference chart, right? That's on your test. Guys, 1 minus 2 sine squared 45 is the same thing as what? It's whatever the formula says, but what does the formula say it is? It's cos 2a. So that's the cos of 2 times, and here's where you find a, 45. So this is the same thing as the cos of 90. Obvi, right? All right, let's go. On to the next one. Look how fast we're flying through this. Question number four. Question number four. We're a fifth of the way done with our review sheet. In which quadrant does the terminal ray of the standard position angle of 15 pi over 4 radians lie? That is ridiculous information. For, that's a lot of words for no reason, right? Let's, un, let's highlight which quadrant. In which quadrant does this lie? 15 pi over 4. Convert that into degrees. That's 15 times 180 divided by 4. And who did this one? Thorman, well, how much is 15 times 180 divided by 4? So 675 degrees. Now, which quadrant does 675 lie? 675. So it's 360. It would have been 720 all the way around. And 675 is just a little bit less than 720, and so it's going to be quadrant 4. That's how it goes. Everybody knows that this is 90, 0, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and here's 360. 360. There you go. Next one. Oh my god, people are flying through this. All right, so, so here's the deal, right? This problem confuses people. This is a random, rare radian question. In this particular instance, it's if you are given negative 1.5 radians, right, and there's no pi to plug into, you have to go the long way. The long way involves you multiplying by 180 divided by pi. And you're actually going to sub, you know, whatever number it is for pi in there, not just keep it. So just multiply. So here we go. So negative 1.5 times 180 divided by, whoops, divided by pi. That's it. That's what we do. 
That's how we do it. Yeah. What's next? Up. Oh my God. Seriously? Seriously? Guys, which one? Cosine is the, and cosine is the x, and sine is the what? Done. Cosine is the x, sine is the y. It's an idea. And now we're going to use that same idea to try and answer these types of questions. So it gives you some, it gives you some coordinate. But let me give you, this coordinate right here was achieved by doing the cosine of whatever angle it is and the sine of whatever angle it is. Okay, that's what these are. So let's use this idea and simply plug in using our calculator. Ah, and this brings up the other interesting point. When you do your test tomorrow, I'm not going to tell it to you, tomorrow, you have to hit the mode button and you better make sure when you do your calculations, you're in the right mode. If you like doing calculations in radians, go in radians. Otherwise, you're in degrees. I have seen many a student get a 40 because that took place. So, cos, let's try the first one. Cos 233, that should be negative rad 3 over 2. I had you memorize that number. You know how much rad 3 over 2 is? 866. Nope, it's not that one. It's not this one. Let's go to the right answer now instead of going through each one. Which, what's the right answer? It's 210. Let's see if 210 yields the right answer. Okay. So here we go. The cosine of 210 is point, negative 0.866. That is negative rad 3 over 2. Let's try the sine of 210 and just make sure. Yep, we're good. Good job, guys. Good job. This is easy. What's next? If, if theta is an angle in standard position and its terminal side passes through that point on the unit circle, then the possible value of theta is, is what? So let's check it out. Let's draw this up. Let's draw this up. This is, this is a negative coordinate, and this is a positive coordinate, and this is also the x coordinate, and this is the y coordinate. So where is, where is, yeah, it's in quadrant three. Here we go. Do you understand how I did that? That immediately knocks you out, knocks you out, knocks. Ooh, ooh, guys, you misled me. It's not quadrant three. In quadrant three, quadrant three is so negative, right? Everybody in quadrant three is negative. This is quadrant two. Quadrant two. That's where x's are negative and y's are positive. Okay. So there's theta right there. That immediately takes u out and it takes u out of the question. You know what I mean? And then the calculator can do the rest. Let's try cos 120. Negative 0.5. Now let's do sine 120. 0.866. It's got to be B. So, so we agreed that the, the, our review sheet was easy, so we're going to jump around to the hard ones. Here we go. So a sector has a radius of 12 centimeters and an angle of 65. To the nearest tenth of a centimeter, find its arc length. This is not a formula on your reference sheet. Here's the formula. Theta equals S over R. And if you're in physics right now, you got hooked up because you've seen that before. And if you're not in physics, you have to memorize it. This right here is the central angle in radians. This over here is the radius. And this guy at the end is the arc length. Yep, it's the arc length. Okay, so now let's plug it in. The problem that we're faced with is that 65 is not in radians. 
You cannot just use 65. Yeah. 65 times pi over 180. Let's make it in radians. Find out how many radians that is. Okay. We're just going to leave the pi in there. What's up? Yeah, it's 13 over 36. So this is 13 pi over 36. And then here's what you do. You take that information and you just plug it in. So we got 13 pi over 36 equals, do we know how much the arc length is? No. Do we know how much the radius is? 12. And then what do we do? Of course. Yeah, we're going to cross multiply. What's 12 times 13? 144, 156. It is? Come on, do a new calculator. I just did that in my head. It is? 156 pi equals 36s. Divide both sides by 36. And s happens to be how much? You know what? We better be careful because we're rounding, right? So I'm going to give it a little squiggles. Nope, we're not rounding. It says find the arc length. I'm claiming S is going to be 156 pi over 36. Does it? Oh, it does say to the nearest tenth. It does say to the nearest tenth. I didn't read. Sorry, my bad. So to the nearest tenth, let's figure out how much this is. Yeah, if you plug that into your calculator, it's 13.6. And that's it. 17 was also apparently really hard. Cos A plus B? Sure. It wants us to find the value of cos A plus B. You got to look in your reference sheet. Cos A plus B, what's the formula for it? Minus? Sin A, sin B. What quadrant are we in? Ooh. Man, I really did. This one was a mean one, right? Because look, the sine of A is in quadrant, which one? Two. And the cos of B is in quadrant three. So I'm going to do them in different colors. Let's also, just so people understand, let's, let's also, just so people understand what I'm doing. Do we know how much sine A is? But we, do you know sine B? Okay. Do you know cos A? But you know cos B. So we're going to go and try and find the question marks right now. All right, so. Well, I mean, we did essentially fill in what we know, and now we're just going to go looking for what it is that we don't know. Here's, here's, there's our coordinate grid. We're going to, we're going to draw in the triangle in quadrant two. We know that the sine of the triangle is 12 over 13, right? Here's angle A. So we need to know this last side. I'm going to label it X because it's in the X direction. How do you find that last side? Of course you do. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, it turns out to be 5. Let's just do it really fast. X squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. X squared what? Equals 169. X squared is going to be equal to 25. And it turns out X is going to be equal to 5. But you have to be really careful about that. Because that's the size of X. It's the size of X. But it's not the direction. The direction of X is negative. So that right there is a negative 5. And that's what you have to be careful of. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't put a square on the 13. You're right. I apologize. My work was incomplete. Thank you. And so over here now, 
we can find out that the cos of A is how much? Yeah. So we've got one of our missing stuff, Matt. Do you understand what I did? We're going to do the exact same thing to the other one. It's just located in another quadrant. Let's do it in, what was I going to do it in? Blue? Angle B. Well, that's slightly annoying. Angle B is in quadrant 3. So you draw it in just like a bow tie, like you were going to the prom. All right? Here's angle B. What else? Negative 4 over 5. That's negative 4, because that's the adjacent side. Here's 5. And now, we could do Pythagorean theorem again, but let's be honest. This is a very famous triangle. It's, this last side is, this, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but, so this last side is worth 3, but it's negative because it's going downwards. So this side is going to be negative 3, and therefore, how much is the sine of B? Negative 3 over 5, and so now what we're going to do is, we're just going to fill in, we're going to fill in our question what it is that we know. We know that the cos of A plus B happens to be equal to the cosine of A was negative 5, whoops, negative 5 over 13. The cos of B, negative 4 over 5. Sine of A was how much? Mm -hmm. 12 over 13. Oh, that's annoying. And what about sine of B? Negative 3 over 5. Some people get freaked out by fractions. Don't be worried. Don't be worried at all. Since there's no radicals, we could just enter something like that into our calculator. Should we do it by hand, though? Yeah, let's do it by hand. Negative 5 times negative 4 is 20. 13 times 5 is 65. 12 times negative 3 is what? Thirteen times five is what? So this is like twenty plus thirty six, which is fifty six over sixty five. That's really weird. Look, it's the digits reversed. How cool. How cool. Okay. So Let's do something a little different. 18 is the same thing. 19 is the same thing. 20. Let's do, let's do 20. Let's do 20. Find in centimeters the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 4 radians with a radius of 3.5. It's one of those formulas you've got to remember. The only formula you have to remember, which is what? Theta equals S over R. Oh, look, what a, what a loser theta is. He got left out. Theta, S and R have each other, but he's all alone. All alone. So sad. Kind of looks like me. The bald-headed kid got left alone again. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Find in centimeters the length of the arc intercepted. Look, it gave you the central angle. It's four. I mean, we don't know S, but we know that R is what? I mean, how much does S have to be? Yeah. Over 1, cross multiply. You know what 4 times 3 and a half is? Done. That's it. That is it. Let's go. We have a request to do 14 now. Sorry, 10. Okay. So, Miton, you, 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 do you, do you remember when I drew this up on the board? A, S, T, C. 
so so here we go here we go so it's on you remember this ASTC okay so you also know you could use this chart right they're all positive in quadrant one sine is positive in quadrant two so it can't be this one and it can't be this one right sine has got to be negative which means it's one of these two quadrants and what does it mean for the cosine to be less than zero it's negative so where is both the sine negative and the cosine negative that's it That's it. That's all there is. Let's go to question 14. Cosecant of 37. No two cos go together. So the cosecant of 37 degrees is the same thing as 1 over the sine of 37. That's it. It's the reciprocal of it. Okay, let's go, let's go to 17. Oh, we've already done it. No? Okay, let's do 15. 15. For the given angle, sketch the angle in standard position. So you're given negative 5 pi over 6. Just convert that to radians. Just convert that to degrees, I'm sorry. Where this is 0, this is, you know, 90, this is 180, this is 270. And this is 360. How much is 5 pi over 6? So that's negative 5 times 180 divided by 6. How much is it? Negative 150? Negative 150, if you're going in the negative direction, goes like this. Negative, start downwards. Drops me off right there. That's negative 150. The reference angle is referring to the angle inside the triangle that could be drawn. How much more to get to 180? 30. The reference angle is also referring to one of the angles from that chart I had you memorize. So, so that would be A, and the reference angle is B, right there. That's the reference angle. So we're on question number nine. I understand we've been jumping around. People are going to get mad at me for that, but I made your video, so... So there. So sine and cosine. What coordinate is the sine coordinate? Sine. It just goes, it works just like the alphabet. The sine is the y coordinate and the cosine is the x coordinate. So the sine is negative and the cos is positive. We're looking for a coordinate with these features. X, Y. The cos was positive and the sine was negative. So positive in the x direction, negative in the y direction. It's got to be in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4. Quadrant 4 knocks you out, knocks you out, and knocks you out. It can only be A. Good? We're going to 11. 11. Ah, oh, piece of cake. The sine of pi over 6 plus the sine of, plus the tan of pi over 4. Pi over 6, what's that in degrees? 30 degrees. What's tan pi over 4? That's 45 degrees, right? So you just break out your calculator, and we're going to punch them in individually. Or you could punch it in as a whole, I guess, but we've learned this. We're too good to do that. So sine 30 is a half. How much is tangent of 30? Tangent of 45, of course. Tangent of 45 is 1. So you know what a half plus 1 is? 1 and a half, a.k.a. 3 divided by 2. It's 1 and a half. OK, so, so let's do 13. 13. The secant of 19, the secant, no two cos go together. Remember that. So the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's just 1 over the cosine of 19. That's it. That one right there. All right. Let's do 18. Let's do 18. 
So here we go. A and B are both positive acute angles. Find the value of cos A plus B. What is cos A plus B? Okay. So cos A plus B is the same thing as cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Nice. And take a look. We know how much sine A is. Check. We know how much cos B is, check, but the other two are missing. Hmm. Did it say which quadrants we were in? They're positive. Yeah, they're both positive. And acute means, what is it, what's an acute angle? Less than 90, so they're both positive, they're both less than 90, it means they're both in quadrant 1. Let's go find the missing sides, just like we did in class. Let's do angle A first. Angle A. Right? We draw that in. Draw the bow tie in. Label that up. Here's A right there. Let's see. Hold on one sec, Teddy. They're both positive, so we don't have to worry about numbers. A, so opposite is 3. This side is 5. And then, do you want me to do Pythagorean theorem? It's just four. You know that. It's a very famous triangle, right? So what were we looking for from angle A? We didn't know the cosine of A. So how much is the cos of A? Yeah, it's four over five. Good. Good job. Let's do B. Same deal. Let's draw it in. No tricky stuff. They were both in quadrant one. How much was B? B was 12, and this was 13. Do you know what that last side is? Ooh, you have that one memorized out? Do you guys want to see how I would get that last side, or you know? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, they're basically the same thing. The last side happens to be 5, using Pythagorean theorem. And then what you're going to do is you're going to plug it in, right? The sine of B, the sine of B is simply 5 over 13. And then we're just going to fill out our formula and be done with it. Let's get a color we haven't gone, we haven't gotten going yet. So this is going to be the cos A plus B equals cosine of A, 4 fifths. What is it? Cosine of B. How much was cosine of B? 12 over 13. What was it? Minus? Yep. The sine of A was how much? What about the sine of B? Five over thirteen. So here we go. Top times top. Four times twelve is what? I think it's forty-eight over sixty-five minus. How much? What happens when you subtract them? Forty-eight minus fifteen has got to be like yeah, thirty-three over sixty-five. That's it. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's going to be the same exact thing, all right? But it's with a different with a different uh, difference formula. What is the sine of A minus B? I think it's got to be like... There you go. Hold on a second. Minus cos A. Sine B. Yep. There you go. Same thing. We know sine A. We don't know sine B. We know cos B. We don't know cos A. So we got to go and find them. A and B are both positive acute angles. That means which quadrant are they in? Good. Let's write that down up on top just in case people got confused. This means quad one. We're going to do it out. Here's angle A. Draw it in there. There's the triangle. There's A. Whoops. 
The sine of A is 3 fifths. What's that force side got to be? Good. Which means what were we missing? We were missing the cosine of A. How much is the cos of A? 4 over 5. Awesome. Let's do the cos. Let's do angle B. Draw it in. It's in quadrant 1. What was it? Here's angle B. Cosine of B was 12. Here's 13. Let's see. How much is that last side? Nope. 5. We found it using Pythagorean theorem. We were missing the sine of this. So this is going to be the sine of B is going to be equal to 5 over 13. Yep. And then all we're going to do is plug into our formula. What is it? The sine of A minus B equals the sine of A. Where is it? How much was A? Three fifths cos B. Yeah. Twelve over thirteen minus cosine of A. And then what's next? Um, five over thirteen. Yep. Whoa there. Whoa there. Five over thirteen. And so this is going to be thirty six over sixty five minus twenty over whoops, that's a horrible looking twenty. Minus twenty over 65. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. 16 over 65. What else? We got, we got one last problem to do and then we're done. I'm sorry the video is so long. Turn our calculators on. It's good to go. So I'm going to type in cos 150. Hit the enter button and it's point negative. 0.866. So it's got to be one of these. Let's just see if it's, I don't know, let's try A. No, it's not A because A is positive. Which one is it? It's B. Let's see. Negative cos 30. Let's see if it comes out to be the same number. And if it is, oh, we're good to go. It is B. Good job. Good job. Way to go.